16 years in construction engineering. In 1989, she, together with medical doctors, have founded the Diabetes Association, LDA, of which she became the president in 1993. <laughs> On 5th July of 2009, she was awarded the Cross of the Knight of the Order for Merits to Lithuania. She served as board member of the IDF European region from 2003 to 2009 and from 2015 to 2017, actively cooperating with National Diabetes Association and proposing in 2004, the DPAC project, the Diabetes Expert Panel from Assessing Countries, through which representatives of patient organizations participated on an equal foot with professionals in EU-related discussions. In 2006, she performed an analysis of rights and social status of patients from Central and Eastern European countries and new members of European Union. She was a regular participant in summit meetings of diabetes organizations of Eastern European countries. In 2017, she re-elected and continued to work as board member of IDF European region as a unique voice representing people living with diabetes across Europe. Main goals of her work are to promote prevention and healthy living, to develop education and diabetes plans, to defend human rights and fight against discrimination. So ma'am, welcome. The topic of the day is access to diabetes care in Lithuania. Hello, uh, thank you at first uh, for inviting me uh, to participate in very important uh, Congress. Plan of my presentation, I a little say about diabetes in Lithuania, about Lithuanian Diabetes Association mission, general targets, uh, main projects, activities, achievements, and access to diabetes care, and then conclusions. <clears throat> diabetes in Lithuania, it is uh, uh, prepared by International Diabetes Federation, Diabetes Atlas, 10th edition, 2021. Population in Lithuania is uh, two, uh, point, uh, two and uh, eight million, and the area is 65, 300 kilometers, square kilometers. Diabetes prevalence of total population aged 2079 uh, is uh, about 9 uh, and 5%. Number of adults with diabetes in this age in uh, 1000 is uh, 100. 86.9. Number of adults with undiagnosed diabetes is uh, 62.6. Number of people with impaired glucose tolerance is 73.2. Number of people with impaired fasting glucose is 53.4. <clears throat> Diabetes related deaths in adults 5,870. Uh, it is more than it was uh, uh, two years ago. It may be influenced COVID 19 uh, virus. Number of children with type 1, we have uh, 907. Mean of diabetes related expenditure per person with diabetes age 2017. Uh, nine is uh, 1,342. Lithuanian Diabetes Association was established in 1989, a member of IDF since 1994. Number of members we have 49 collective members, local diabetes organization. In them, uh, we have 3,000 individual members. Mission is to promote diabetes care, prevention, and review in Lithuania. Main targets is 
provide assistance to old people with diabetes, organize education in diabetes management and care, promote independence, equity, and self-sufficiency for all people with diabetes, raise awareness in the population and among carers of health for prevention of complications and diabetes itself, remove hindrances to the fullest possible integration of people with diabetes in society. Main projects of what we are doing in Lithuania, uh, diabetes school in office of the association where free consultations gives uh, nurse diabetes educator and doctor endocrinologist. Education in summer camps for youth and adult with diabetes type 1 and type 2. Seminars for people with diabetes for leaders of the collective members of association and um, Events of physical activities for youth and adult, cycling, canoes, magazine diabetes, well diabetes, the events with free prophylactic blood glucose test, and we have a website. Uh, there is uh, our map of Lithuania, and uh, uh, there are uh, in all regions we have uh, uh, local diabetes organization, and our organization we have. Uh, sponsors from pharmaceutical companies and we get money from uh, budget uh, from social uh, uh, ministry. Education in summer camps, as you see, uh, many people are interested in education and would like to meet every year. The seminars and conferences is full halls uh, and so on. In all of this, uh, this um, seminars and uh, camps, uh, we uh, make uh, questionnaires and asking people about what their knowledge about diabetes and uh, uh, how they access uh, uh, health care. And in uh, 2015, we had um, uh, uh, in, initiated an investigation, evaluation of disease and treatment of people with diabetes type 2, and questionnaire was filled in our events and in regional diabetes organization. It participated about 500 <clears throat> people with type 2 diabetes from 15 Lithuanian cities. Questionnaires were analyzed by students of Vilnius University of Medicine faculty under the guidelines of Dr. Vysotskiene. Analyzed questions, general review of patients with diabetes type 2, diabetes control, spread of diabetes complications and consequent diseases, diabetes treatment and related problems. And in conclusion, we find that about 46% of those people had an insufficient diabetes control, which was normally related with high body mass of patients, long-term morbidity, more frequent complications of diabetes, higher number of associated disease, lack of knowledge about resp respondents' disease and treatment. <clears throat> We inform our members through a periodic, periodical publication magazine, Diabetes, which uh, is um, published since 1994. And there we publish information about uh, Diabetes Association, about uh, current national diabetes, FES, regular free publication service as a necessary link between of members and between and diabetes association. Publication is tool in patient education and helps doctors and nurses increase their knowledge about diabetes education. And uh, our magazine is on website. It's like this. And the uh, activities of youth with diabetes, they participate in uh, cycling, canoes, and uh, so on. 
and uh, for uh, young people we have uh, uh, facebook uh, they have group and they have possibility to discuss and we organize competition diabetes is no ups- obstacles to sports many people from many di- local diabetes clubs come every year one time and we celebrate uh, world diabetes day with um, uh free prophylactic uh, check, checks of glucose access to diabetes care the Lithuanian health insurance fund finances medical care and treatment for people who are covered by the national health insurance system the fund reimburses diabetes treatments and supplies injective insulin according basic price all kinds of insulins we have oral medications according to basic price medication for neuropathy related pain 80% for um, hba1c assessments uh, per year uh, microalbuminuria lipid testing retinopathy screening structural education and diabetes food care through general practitioners by nurses diabetes educators and food care specialists uh, accessories for insulin pumps uh, are compensated for children youth and adults with type 1 diabetes pregnant women during pregnancy and women who want to uh, pregnant for one year and uh, we have uh, Uh, different uh, uh, kinds of not kinds strips <laughs> 108 for youth 900 for adult uh, with type 1 diabetes and um, li- now we have uh, rent of insulin pumps uh, for uh, for children uh, two years from two years ago and uh, uh, We have not rainbow self-monitoring blood pressure meters, self-monitoring blood glucose meters, but always sponsored by pharmaceutical companies. Needles for pens to adults with type 2 and type uh, 1 diabetes sponsored only by pharmaceutical uh, com- uh, companies, only one lancet for one cartridge or single pen for children they get to idols um, for one day uh, insulin pumps to adults with type 2 diabetes psycho- psychological assessment dentistry and dietitian uh, news in 2022 From, from the first January this year, and new guidelines for the treatment of diabetes mellitus with reimbursable medicine from compulsory health insurance budget is in force in Lithuania. It is based on ESD and the uh, American Diabetes Association recommendations. Till this time was used guidelines prepared in 2012. From 1st April this year, a rent of insulin pumps is reimbursed uh, to all people with type 1 diabetes and uh, from 1st July uh, will be reimbursed uh, glucose sensors uh, to all people with type 1 diabetes and um, Our representatives of Lithuanian Diabetes Association have permanent uh, meetings with our governmental institutions and uh, we have uh, our members in various committees, councils, commissions, in Committee on Health, FES, same as uh, in the Council of Compulsory Health Insurance um, Uh, and uh, a member of the colleague of ministry, it was Ilya now, is not a member of the Commission of Reimbursement of Disease, Medicines and Medical Devices, a member of the super, uh, Supervisory Committee of the EU Funds Investment Operational Program, a member of Family Medicine Policy Group, a member of the 
uh, non-governmental organizations, councils, and the, the um, government me and uh, members in various other working groups in governmental institutions as representatives of patients' organization. And in conclusion, the interest of all people concerned with diabetes, whether they live or work with disease, are best served by joining together into one national association. The Lithuanian Diabetes Association includes people with diabetes, their families, uh, healthcare professionals, scientists, physicians, allied health personnel. In spite of many difficulties, uh, uh, Diabetes Association believes is not the right. Uh, we, it is on the right track. Elda has done a great job uh, uh, over 30 years already. Hel uh, charity helping people with diabetes and improving diabetes care in country. Participation in the work on various institutions helps us to realize started goals, to control the use of the budget means for diabetes prevention, control planning, and executing of the health program. Almost every solution faces opposition in differences to people's troubles, but the Lithuanian Diabetes Association joined in together with other patients' organizations has a huge and effective power. Uh, thank you for your attention. Dear mm. Thank, thank you, Dr. Yeah. Uh, yes, I am, I am Dr. Musbah Kamil, I am the yeah, president. <laughs> President of the Vicination Study Group, and uh, I have the pleasure to share this uh, session uh, with Dr. Zubaida. And um, I am, uh, actually enjoyed the uh, presentation of uh, uh, the uh, our friend, the the the, the ex speaker, uh, Dr. Vida Augustinini, and. Uh, uh, this is a good work in Lithuania, and let us go to the next uh, speaker. Um, our uh, next speaker will be uh, uh, Dr. Kirik uh, Suta. Uh, she will um, uh, speak about the insulin sets. Yes, okay. So the next speaker is Dr. Julia. She'll be Doctor. speaking. Oh. I'm the oh, coordinator uh, for the session. Yes. And yes, welcome, go sir. On. Go on, go on. <laughs> so can you share this intro slide, please, team? Of Dr. Julia. Yes, sir, please, you can introduce yes, the... Dr. Julia, yes. Do yes, Dr. Julia is uh, uh, Associate Professor of Medicine, Division of Endocrinology and Diabetology. Uh, uh, Austria, and uh, the, now she is serving as the uh, associate professor for division chronology and uh, and she received her medical degree from the Medical University of Graz. Uh, also, she has a visiting professor at the Department of Diabetes and Endocrinology and Metabolism in the University Hospital of Bern, Switzerland. Um, she is an expert in diabetes technology research, and she uh, will um, uh, speak to us about the insulin set devices. Please, Dr. Julia, go. Thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen now, um, hopefully. And here we go. Can you see my screen? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Very good. Thank you so much. Um, so um, I'm talking to you today about insulin infusion sets. Um, the past, what has been um, kind of uh, ongoing so far in insulin infusion set development, how we can assess it, and later on the recent developments. These are my disclosures. And so far, the guideline for insulin infusion set replacement was that manufacturers recommended to change the sets every two to three days 
depending on the type of set. So for steel sets, it was two days. For Teflon sets, it was three days. Um, and this guideline referred to the avoidance of deterioration of glucose control due to reduced insulin absorption um, and also to decrease the risk of infection and development of lipodystrophy at the infusion site. But of course, some patients did not really like the frequent infusion set change. They tried to extend it anyways. And on the other hand side, we had issues that insulin infusion sets already failed earlier than it was expected. Um, there are even studies uh, dating back from the uh, early 2009 uh, years where people uh, investigated how stable is insulin delivery if people extend um, the insulin infusion set wear. And in a group of healthy volunteers, uh, one could see um, that even the speed uh, was faster on the fourth day of wear time compared to the first day of wear time. And another study investigated um, similar uh, experiment in people living with um, type uh, 1 diabetes. And here we see that the onset of action is even shifted 20 minutes earlier for the fourth day of wear compared to the first day of wear. So over extended wear time already then was tested. And we could see in these experiments that insulin infusion set performance was not really worse on a longer duration of insulin infusion set wear. Then uh, there was a study performed by colleagues of ours uh, in the Netherlands uh, where they investigated different types of pumps, so conventional pumps and patch pumps, also in type 1 diabetes. Uh, and here on day 1 versus day 3, and what we could see that there were lower postprandial glucose levels um, on the third day uh, of wear compared to the first day of wear, which could indicate that also here in this postprandial setting, um, we see a better absorption when the set is already been worn for a certain period of time. So that might be attributed um, to the um, already saturated tissue level uh, with insulin. And thus, maybe on the first day of wear, we do not have such a good performance as over the prolonged uh, or the course of the um, wear time. And uh, just to see the milligrams per deciliter difference on the first day of wear, the postprandial peak was um, a delta of 75 milligrams per deciliter. And on day three, it was a delta of only 45 milligrams per deciliter. And longevity of continuous inf uh, subcutaneous infusion uh, catheters um, is something that is of interest, not only for people living with diabetes, but also um, for the manufacturers. Um, and they are still the bottleneck of insulin pump therapy, those uh, infusion sets so far. And in many cases, the failures are caused either by catheter blockage, by leakage, by kinking. Uh, of course, there can also be uh, impaired insulin um, absorption, unexplained hyperglycemia. Um, and thus, in many cases, people living with type 1 diabetes do not want to stay on insulin pump therapy if they have too many um, issues with infusion sets. So it's of interest uh, also for the manufacturers to develop new sets that overcome these hurdles. Then we performed uh, various um, clinical trials uh, in our facility. So there was one study where we tested a novel um, insulin infusion catheter that uh, involved coating. Um, and it can be assumed that this novel catheter with coating and also a novel geometry uh, might be able to be worn longer uh, than a commercial current uh, catheter. Um, and it was interesting to see the tolerability uh, and the wear time in an established um, animal model. Why was it done uh, in an animal model? Um, of course, um, it is um, sometimes easier to test such experiments. And additionally, we wanted to sample um, tissue samples um, in that setting. And what can we see from uh, this animal study? Here it's um, the catheter uh, infusion uh, site that um, can be seen. Uh, and that was day four of wear time for the um, novel um, uh, coated catheter versus what we can see here is the control catheter. And already here we can see uh, a different tissue reaction 
uh, between the two um, catheters. Um, additionally, the inflamed area uh, was uh, smaller um, for the coated catheters, uh, as can be seen here uh, on day four. So the explantation uh, was performed uh, on uh, day eight, sorry, on day four and day eight. Um, and what we can also see uh, that percentage of catheters that had issues was lower for the co coated catheters compared to the non coated and former uh, used uh, catheters. Uh, also, the reaction in immune histochemistry were different, uh, not only for the novel catheters, but also for Teflon versus steel, because we also wanted in the same experiment to see the difference between uh, different types uh, of catheters. And steel catheters caused more uh, inflammation, both in terms of immune histochemistry, uh, as well as in inflammatory uh, markers such as uh, CD68, interleukins, uh, and TGF factors. Um, then the question, of course, is how can this be translated into a human model? Uh, of course, it's not so easy to explant tissues uh, from humans after wearing an insulin infusion catheter. And together with the Department of Plastic Surgery, we developed a novel uh, technique in people who have to undergo um, surgery to remove additional adipose tissue. So, for example, after bariatric surgery uh, and weight loss, they had those skin flaps that uh, allowed removal. Uh, we inserted again here different types of catheters uh, with different types of coatings. And the wear time was prior to surgery, one uh, to 10 days. And then um, after surgery, we we received those um, skin flaps. So this study is still ongoing. It's not yet published. So we need to recruit the last uh, patients. But just to show you, also this model is feasible to be uh, done in certain human settings. The difference might be, again, that people with obesity or following bariatric surgery might not have the completely same tissue as uh, people living with type 1 diabetes. But it can be guessed that they are, of course, closer to that tissue compared to animal model. And I think we will gain important insights from these uh, experiments. Uh, then we also performed another study where uh, we um, wanted to collect tissue enclosing the infusion uh, cannula in humans. And one of our research technicians had a very uh, interesting um, idea how to do that. So they performed a punch biopsy around uh, that uh, tissue and gained a small uh, tissue sample, uh, including the cannula. So the cannula was cut uh, beforehand. Um, then it was um, fixated in a fixative fluid. Uh, and again, histochemical uh, and immunohistochemical analysis um, and determination of mRNA expression uh, using real-time PCR uh, were performed. And this uh, method is, of course, less invasive and could be in the future uh, be used also to assess um, reactions to uh, glucose um, sensors. Um, thereafter, there was a 3D reconstruction of the cannular tissue uh, interface. Um, and we can see here how small uh, this tissue probe is. This is why also it was accepted by um, ethics um, committee. Uh, and the 3D um, uh, remodeling and reconstruction allows us to really see the cannula channel. Um, and we have here then the combination of light uh, microscope images with histological um, sections. And we can see even the different types of tissue. So we see the collagen uh, fibers, we see the interstitial fluid, we see the fibroblasts even, and the macrophages. So this allows us really um, extended research um, in this area in the future. Another technique that we um, developed to better test the uh, insulin uh, infusion site uh, surrounding area is the sampling of the interstitial fluid from the infusion site. And there, um, a, a cannula with perforated holes uh, was introduced uh, throughout uh, the insulin infusion cannula, and the sampling uh, was performed um, via a pump. Uh, that allowed us to collect um, the tissue. And again, here uh, we can analyze for smaller metabolites such as glucose, lactate, and pyruvate, as well as protein co concentrations 
such as cytokines, uh, fibrils, and insulin. And yeah, so we can, uh, of course, in a later time, perform that uh, even uh, or could perform that uh, at home if uh, we modified an insulin infusion cannula uh, for an extended experiment. Of course, doing it uh, in this mode can only be done at the research center, but if you want to uh, perform it for a longer period of time, this is a feasible experiment. And uh, last but not least, I want to share with you the current research on uh, newly developed insulin infusion catheters. And the first I want to share is the lantern uh, catheter that is also a coated can catheter. And the idea behind this is that the Teflon catheter might kink and usually the kinks occur towards the tip uh, or the occlusion also occurs um, at the tip. And if an occlusion occurs, the catheter has this lantern design uh, that enables an opening uh, of the infusion uh, set um, and enables um, that the insulin still um, can uh, um, can get to the um, tissue where it should act. And for that, we performed a clamp experiment um, at our facility. It was um, um, an extended wear again over seven days. In between, patients had uh, a home phase where they performed their regular um, diabetes treatment and always uh, at the days between, uh, we performed euglycemic uh, clamps following insulin boli. And we compared it also to a standard uh, infusion set. So what could we see uh, on the first day when we compare the standard infusion set with the novel um, technology? There is slightly uh, a deterioration um, in onset of action. But if we compare all the other days, we see that the performance um, is quite stable between uh, days one and uh, even um, uh, between days four and uh, even seven. And potentially the influence um, of day uh, one was because the clamp was really close by each other and there could be an influence of, of the clamp uh, from one day to the other. Uh, and if you look into insulin uh, requirements, we can see over time, especially towards um, day six, there is a slight increase um, in insulin dose and also a slight deterioration uh, in terms of uh, time in glucose range if we consider 70 to 180 uh, as the range. Another uh, company developed also another prototype of an extended wear insulin infusion set for adults. Uh, and this uh, catheter has uh, three holes, has a coil reinforcement, and consists of soft cannula uh, material. Currently, it's only available in an angled um, infusion set type. And this study was the preliminary study performed in Australia over two uh, wear times of seven days. Uh, and the majority of infusion sets, as you can see, survived um, the seven days. Uh, and again, here we can see that over time, um, time in target range slightly decreased uh, and uh, glucose uh, concentration as well as um, total insulin dose increased uh, over time. And uh, then there is the largest study performed so far testing the novel uh, Medtronic uh, infusion set for seven-day survival. And here we can again see that the majority of sets survived um, seven days, um, irrespective of insulin type, whether it was insulin aspirate or insulin Lispro. And patients' uh, acceptance was very high. They were very satisfied with extended wear uh, and easiness of use and convenience of use. So I think this is also an important aspect we have to uh, consider. And last but not least, those uh, sets are now even approved. So the Medtronic set is approved by the FDA and launched already uh, in several countries um, in Europe. This is how the set currently looks like. Uh, and just to wrap up what we have discussed so far, insulin infusion sets are still the bottleneck of insulin pump therapy. Frequent set changes are considered burdensome. Novel research techniques help to better understand the subcutaneous tissue response to infusion sets. The first extended wear infusion sets are now tested, and one set is even FDA approved and marketed in Europe. Extended wear sets might even be better suited for combination with um, artificial pancreas uh, systems because there we can mitigate those effects that we see 
of uh, higher glucose values towards the end of wear time and increased uh, insulin requirements because that can be automatically adjusted. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much uh, uh, for this uh, elegant uh, talk. And uh, this is uh, a very um, uh, 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 to hope to the, those who are taking insulin, we all uh, uh, consider the difficulties in insulin injection and the, the um, uh, ease and the sustainability of the uh, insulin action. Uh, required by this uh, technology, and uh, I think it will add uh, a lot for, of ease to our uh, patient, not only for type 1, but also for those who are taking insulin on type 2. Thank you, and we will uh, um, uh, postpone the discussion till uh, the, uh, uh, we have finished the, the session, and uh, we will move now to the third speaker. Uh, Sir, so the speaker will be uh, one of uh, my best friends, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Jackie. Is Jackie is around? Yes, yes, I'm yeah. here. I'm, here. Yeah. I'm pleased uh, to introduce uh, uh, my dear friend, uh, Jackie um, uh, Malouf from Lebanon. Uh, the founder and the president of uh, uh, Dialab uh, National Diabetes or, uh, uh, Organization in Lebanon and one of the very active and smart uh, um, uh, personnel in our uh, MENA region. And um, she holds a PhD in public relations and communications from uh, the University uh, of uh, Corlins, uh, Virginia, USA. And uh, she always and always and always uh, working as a, a smart advocate to those people living with diabetes, have multiple uh, activities in the educational and the motivational um, uh, 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 aspects uh, in uh, diabetes, which are uh, very important. So, um, uh, not only uh, she holds the diabetes educator certificates, but also she participates in all these programs in our MENA region and internationally. And so, I, um, I am uh, pleased to introduce Jackie uh, Malouf for. Um, uh, her talk about the digital uh, health, how it uh, can participate in diabetes education. Uh, please, Jackie, go. Thank you so much. I am honored with your friendship, Professor Misbah, and I am uh, very glad to be here today, but I cannot share my presentation. So if you allow me, the organizers, to share, please. Okay. Um, can you see my presentation yes, now? Yes, yes, okay. yes. So uh, I would like, first of all, to thank you, all the organizers, for inviting me today to this 12th World Congress of Diabetes India, specifically to this Diabetes Care Symposium. And uh, I am really honored to be here talking about a very, very important topic, which is the importance of therapeutic patient education in diabetes management with a small glance at digital health, because digital health by itself deserves a whole 15 minute presentation. So I will mention today a bit about the non-communicable diseases NCDs, a type of diabetes with a purpose, of course, because you all know the types of diabetes. Uh, we'll talk about the management of type 2 diabetes and the role of therapeutic patient education, the burden of the disease, about therapeutic patient education itself from different perspectives, and one key component, which is the diabetes self-management, education and support, the SME and the SMES the research supporting uh, therapeutic patient education, what are the challenges and obstacles, and of course, digital health at a glance and some points as a conclusion. 
Let me just. So, um, the non communicable diseases or NCDs, or we call them also chronic diseases, kill 41 million people each year, that accounting for around 71% of all deaths globally. What, uh, and also, the NCD associated mortality is expected, unfortunately, to increase. Now, if we look at this graph here by the World Health Organization, uh, we can see that cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, and cancer share four altogether of the modifiable uh, risk factors. And when we say risk factors, we know that those we, uh, when we say modifiable risk factors, we know that we can change that uh, reality. So tobacco use, unhealthy diets, physical inactivity, and too much use of alcohol are modifiable factors, which means if patients are educated enough, if they know these facts, they can prevent many of the complications and onsets of diabetes and other chronic diseases. Oops. Uh, the management of type 2 diabetes, I'm sure you're all familiar with, but I would like to point out that other than the doctor's visit and the medication prescribed by the physicians and endocrinologists, look at this chart where improved diet, regular exercise and healthy weight, and the self-management through lifestyle are three components of the treatment that require and demand that the, the patient is educated enough to know how they should control their weight, what is an improved or a healthy diet, what, is, what does it mean when we say self-management through lifestyle. All these to point out how important therapeutic patient education is. Now, when we talk about, sorry, we have to mention, of course, uh, the burden that can be caused by diabetes and, of course, the other diseases. So for that, let me share with you some facts. More, most of you are aware of those facts. So um, 537 million adults, this is by the International Diabetes Federation or uh, IDF, uh, they live with diabetes. Now 73 million are in my own region and your region, Professor Misbah, in the MENA region. And one in three adults are undiagnosed. Again, the importance of education and raising the level of awareness. The, what is most, uh, you know, uh, uh, what should be an eye opener is that 541 million adults in the world are with increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Now, that number particularly could and should be prevented from happening through therapeutic patient education and through awareness. In Lebanon, just a quick uh, piece of information, we have around uh, half a million people, adults, living with diabetes. Um, again, talking about the burden of the disease, this time from the perspective of the people living with a chronic disease, and in this case, we're talking diabetes, it can be very difficult to them to adapt. We have the drug and the non-drug treatment, the self-testing, the self-monitoring, and those may seem very complicated when they are all at once happening to especially someone newly diagnosed. That may result in many consequences, uh, psychological, affecting mental health, familiar consequences, social consequences, mainly due to the misconceptions around diabetes and the wrong information. And of course, financial consequences that by itself can lead to low treatment adherence and to affecting negatively, unfortunately, the quality of life. All of that, and as a result of all of these facts, therapeutic patient education is indeed critical. Oops. Okay. 
So now we will tackle the different aspect of therapeutic patient education. And what it does is it enables patients to acquire and maintain several abilities that will allow them to manage their lives with their disease in a very optimal way, preventing, of course, uh, complications and living a better quality of life. Now, TPE or therapeutic patient education it doesn't happen once. It's a continuous process and should be integrated in the healthcare system in, in all. And it can happen at different stages of the disease. At diagnosis, which is the ideal situation, starting at diagnosis, it can happen during different life impacting uh, follow-up events such as uh, pregnancy, tackling gestational diabetes and uh, its complications, during a decrease in motivation, when we notice that the patient is not motivated enough to uh, adhere to the treatment, that's a good time to um, use therapeutic patient education. After onset of complications, I would say let's not wait to that stage when the complication starts to use therapeutic patient education. What does it include when we speak about therapeutic patient education? It includes various components, organized awareness, information, and here we are talking about accurate pieces of information, self-care learning, psychosocial support, and in some cases, prescribed treatment and care. A hospital and other healthcare setting should be adapted to TPE. Organizational information is required and behavior related to health and illness, of course. When we talk about therapeutic patient education, it does not only help the patient themselves, it helps their families. How? It helps them better understand the disease and the treatment. It helps them cooperate with the healthcare and how many times the endocrinologists and the physicians are wanting more cooperation from the patient and from the family. So here it is. This is the uh, solution. It helps them live healthier. And of course, it helps them maintain and improve even their quality of life. The sentence, a short sentence, quality of life, you will hear it a lot throughout my presentation. I believe we need to insist on that. It's not only about living, it's what is the quality of life we are living. Again, to mention uh, about incorporating therapeutic patient education and in this educational role into the care practice, what does that require? It requires specific training of healthcare professionals. And for that, we need to have a willing mindset to be, uh, you know, to, to undergo uh, ongoing trainings. It requires also planning structured educational programs. And here comes the role of diabetes self-management education, the DSME, and the ADA is one of the leading organizations in that regard. And allow me to quote from the standard of medical care in 2020 by the American Diabetes Education, a specific sentence that says, all people with diabetes should participate in diabetes self-management education DSME and receive the support needed to facilitate the knowledge, the decision making, and skills mastery necessary for diabetes self care. Continuing with the importance of diabetes self management education and support, there is a consensus report by many of the leading diabetes organizations in the world, again with the ADA. It states that diabetes education provides critical education and support for better implementation of the treatment. It reduces the hospital visits and the emergency situations that we would like all to avoid. It reduces, and listen to this, hypoglycemia, all-cause mortality, and HbA1c. Imagine how wonderful, because we all know and we are aware that if we reduce HbA1c by one point, that can have a tremendous positive impact on the overall health. It promotes healthy lifestyle behaviors. 
It addresses weight man maintenance. It shows the way to the patients how to maintain their ideal weight. It improves self-efficacy and the quality of life again, repeating the words quality of life. When we talk about research supporting therapeutic patient education, allow me to mention three very quickly. In a five-year retrospective study of 59 French adult people with type 2 diabetes, it was found that therapeutic patient education can be very effective in reducing both BMI, the body mass index, and the HbA1c. On another study, on another note, in a cross-sectional study of 100 Lebanese adult people with type 2 diabetes, including several of our members who participated in this, therapeutic patient education was found to be efficient in controlling, uh, in uh, better glycemic control, in better diabetes self-management and self-care activities. That was done by Dr. Najwa el uh, we are happy to have her on our scientific board at, at Dialab. In a 12-month study of 24 uh, people, uh, young people with type 1 diabetes, pediatric education for type 1 diabetes, PED, had a positive impact on all of these facts, HbA1c, knowledge about type 1 diabetes, self-management, even at a younger age, and well-being. And what you can see from those three studies that regardless of the age group, regardless of the demographics, therapeutic patient education had tremendously positive impacts on the overall health and very exciting outcomes. Now, of course, we spoke beautifully about all the nice outcomes that uh, therapeutic patient education can have, but we cannot disregard the challenges and the obstacles, and they can be many, such as insufficient teamwork, because as it is a multidisciplinary approach, teamwork is needed, and in some cases it is insufficient. Difficulty in assuring valid TPE or therapeutic patient education Let's not forget that the conservatism of certain educational institutions can be a major barrier. The lack of, educa of educational and financial resources, of course, is a major challenge. And the tradition and culture of the healthcare professional in certain situations is, of course, an obstacle. And definitely the insufficient motivation within institutions and among policymaker and healthcare professionals. So this is a call for action here that we need to work with policymakers, with healthcare professionals, with health institutions, all together to highlight the importance of therapeutic patient education. As I said in the beginning of my presentation, uh, digital health, uh, health will be only spoken about in a small glance at it because it deserves a lot more attention. And if anything, we should have learned from the past two years of living with a global COVID pandemic, that is, and it should be, the importance of digital health. Now, the technology and uh, uh, digital world is now integrated as a daily part of our lives. And the world population is now more connected and interconnected than ever before. Innovation particularly is going so fast and at an unprecedented scale, yet the application to improve health of population remains largely untapped. And this is really unfortunate. We should make use of this immense scope uh, for uh, and use it for the benefit of getting better digital health solutions. So, um, okay, something, oops, something is happening here. Digital tools not only help consumers make better informed decisions, but they also, uh, they also um, uh, help them to improve their own health by giving them and providing them with new and many options to facilitate the prevention, early diagnosis of life-threatening diseases such as diabetes and management of chronic conditions, especially diabetes in this case, outside of the traditional 
healthcare setting. The benefits are many. Let me point out that it reduces inefficiency, inefficiencies. It improves the access. It's so easy. From a smartphone, you can have access to digital health. It, of course, reduces the costs from one-to-one -one in person consultations, and it makes medicine more personalized for patients. Now, before I tackle the points of my conclusion, let me uh, state this quote from the unforgettable Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And let me add, to improve your quality of life and your health. Now, to, to speak about what we can conclude from the above exposed points, People living with diabetes and who happen to have access to education, especially therapeutic patient education, they do manage their disease better and they are considered to live healthier than their counterparts, those who do not have access to TPE. But despite the efforts of many specialists, endocrinologists, endocrinology departments and units in educational in um, health institutions, the access uh, to TPE patients with diabetes mellitus is lacking worldwide. Now, let me mention that, of course, in some countries, in some parts of the world, it is more advanced than in other parts, but let's all put hand in hand and work together to enlarge this part of the world where therapeutic patient education is booming for the benefit of every single person living with diabetes. I have few recommendations here for the educational institutions to please review and revise as much as needed the educational objectives of teaching and learning methods and the evaluation process of educational programs for healthcare providers. We need to change the mindset and be always ready to improve our skills. That all in order to ensure that therapeutic patient education receives all the attention it deserves. We need to incorporate therapeutic patient education in the curricula for all degrees related to health and sciences. And also it's a call to grant academic credits to participants who satisfactorily complete continuing educational courses related to therapeutic patient education. I'll just mention quickly all the sources, even if I took a small piece of information from them. And I really would like to thank you for listening to my pre presentation and thanks to all the organizers of this incredible uh, conference and thanks to our moderators and all the other speakers for their wonderful presentations. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, this is a very um, elegant and uh, important presentation. All of us know that education um, is a very uh, important tool, uh, not only for the control of diabetes to avoid the complications, but as you said, also for uh, uh, improving quality of life. And uh, um, let us admit that uh, this is underestimated in, uh, in, um, uh, in most of the world, uh, especially our uh, middle and low income countries. And uh, I think uh, one of the uh, major uh, um, uh, concerns in uh, International Diabetes Federation, our IDF, uh, uh, um, uh, and the ADA and the, all the organizations uh, caring for the abuse uh, uh, in, in um, the community. Uh, one of the most concerns is to uh, increase uh, or empower the people with diabetes uh, by education, education, and education. Um, and uh, now when we are uh, going faster in technology and digital health and uh, having these uh, uh, tools uh, in hand, uh, the role of education must uh, uh, going uh, up and the stream must be uh, um, more than uh, just uh, to 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 uh, uh, remind the people about, but also for the uh, professionals also. Uh, so this is a very important uh, uh, tool. 
but as you said, we, we need a structured programs. We, we need to consider our cultural uh, uh, aspects uh, when giving education, uh, showing what, what we have uh, uh, in our hands, what are the people they are uh, ready to do. The messages are different, but it must go hand in hand for improving the quality of life. Thank you, Jackie, very much. And uh, I am happy to see you and uh, uh, to listen to you also. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, the uh, next speaker, and uh, I think this is a very uh, <clears throat> uh, special uh, symposium uh, led by uh, ladies, and this is not a uh, uh, part of discrimina discrimination, but because they are um, uh, having the good feeling, having the good tools, and they can convey the message. So I appreciate the organizers to put these four stars on, uh, of ladies on this symposium. And um, I am now pleased to introduce my dear friend, Irina, uh, uh, from Ukraine, and uh, hoping that uh, the uh, disaster uh, will uh, finish uh, soon. And um, uh, in this context, we must admit that not only the natural disasters uh, are, are, we are facing, but also are facing the human disasters uh, that made by uh, uh, the uh, uh, conflicts uh, between uh, uh, human uh, beings. And this will affect our uh, uh, people with diabetes, suffering also from other problems. And uh, uh, Irina is my dear friend, as she is Vice President, International Diabetes Federation since uh, 2019. And she is board member of the uh, International Diabetes Federation uh, Europe. Uh, she is a pharmacist, not only pharmacist, but she is a leader pharmacist, and she have a lot of research interests and activities, uh, not only in Europe, but also uh, all over uh, the world, and uh, 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 she is a distinguished one uh, for uh, this context, and we shall um, uh, uh, enjoy her talk about what can we uh, he uh, um, uh, help? Uh, how can we help our peoples during the disasters, uh, especially in our situations in uh, Ukraine and the other parts of the world, like uh, 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 Middle East, also in Lebanon, Syria, uh, Jordan, uh, Yemen, uh, 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 Libya, and uh, Palestine. So uh, her um, speech will be a model for how to deal with the disaster to uh, ensure uh, effective diabetes care for people with diabetes. Irina, please, go. Thank you so much, uh, my dear Michal. I'm very happy that you moderate this session. <laughs> I never forget our first meeting and we have very interesting conversation. And go back to my, uh, to my speech. This is one, well, just a moment. I try to open my presentation. Yeah, but here, how can I make this? To do like this, how we can put. Just a moment. Oh, okay, take your time. Full screen, full screen. This maybe. Okay. Hmm. You are lucky, Professor Misbah, to moderate this panel of all. Uh, yes, yes, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed very much. Women. <laughs> no, 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 not only women. They are, they, uh, you are stars, uh, Yankee. Uh, not only ordinary women. Uh, both you uh, and uh, uh, Rina and uh, our other uh, two eminent speakers, uh, um, uh, they are very elegantly talked about what we are uh, Indeed. Uh, need and, and to we listen. Need more women at the International Diabetes Federation Board. That's yes, the so, so <laughs> you, we, we, we expect this and we support this, uh, Jackie. 
Hello again. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, uh, the, the, the screen is not yet uh, uh, displayed on our... Uh, um, no. Yes. Because yeah. you have the desktop only, your desktop only. So you will go exit from this and then go to your presentation, please. But did you see my present start my presentation? No. No? Yes. Wow. Uh, Irina, you have to have it open in the background and then go to share from here. You will be able to share it then. Yes. It has to be open. It is not yet open. It is strange because I see this my presentation. I must take away background or what? Yes. Uh, only, minimize, only the... zoom. minimize Zoom if you allow me, Professor Misbah. If you minimize okay. Zoom on your screen, then you open the presentation, you reopen Zoom, and you can share. You ask here. I have already to do this. <laughs> Stop sharing. Stop sharing? Yeah. Stop sharing. What? I can manage this. Stop sharing. And and then again. And what about now? Yes. Okay. We got it. Thanks. It's yeah. Yes, ma'am. Now it's okay. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Um, first of all, thank you so much, for, uh, Dr. Banshi, for in inviting me, and thank you for your team uh, who organized a super congress, which we know, we know with Vida, what this super congress in in past, and this is continue take this flag for the first congress. Thank you so much. And also I want to that we a little bit uh, remind about Professor uh, Shaukat Sadikot who make big, big input in our diabetes movement, in our diabetes care for people with diabetes, especially for in low and the low middle country. And uh, we never thinking about diabetes in disaster, but suddenly it happens with Ukraine. But I start from start, uh, from start, I will speak a little bit more general and then go to my personal experience. Of course, uh, as uh, say Professor Mehab that humanitarian crisis is very growing and uh, represent in mayor global health challenge. And the political instability and conflict have resulted in record a number of people being displaced uh, from the homes and additional natural disaster are on the rise. Health care during emergency response can understandable focus on trauma, infection, uh, disease, and other acute condition. We understand this, but chronic, uh, chronic disease have historically been given low priority. If you see uh, that the WHO and the um, uh, United Nations make this like act now to support people with diabetes in humanitarian setting and achieve to the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. That's it's a lot of goals, but uh, who will do this in practical? We will do. And and uh, if it's uh, thinking about concrete chronic disease, diabetes in disaster. In this uh, crisis context, the majority of people have extremely limited access to resource. The complication of diabetes uh, are a heavy burden of individuals and their families, as well as all the health systems. Their factors combined with stress and psychology challenges associated with crisis to uh, cause additional suffering for people with diabetes. This is rise to issue for people with diabetes. They need to better management uh, to avoid excess patient mortality, the logistical challenges for ensuring a continuous supply of treatment, especially uh, insulin. And if you look on uh, one research about uh, burden of diabetes in humanitarian crisis, that's extremely big, and this is affect population with diabetes face enormous 
constraints accessory care, mainly because high medical cost. Uh, if uh, in this case, um, 2019 was uh, in Harvard University, Harvard University was the science uh, Boston Declaration. Uh, it, uh, it set four major targets, unified and strengthened advocacy, universal access to insulin and other essential medicine, and a diagnostic for glucomic and blood pressure control in humanitarian crisis. Establishment of unfair set of clinical and operation guidelines for the diabetes in a humanitarian crisis and improve and coordinate data and surveillance. If you look uh, from this, um, from uh, the WHO page, it's, they make a lot of uh, documents which can help to us to, uh, in concrete and practical situation. I will not follow for one of them for, because I want to more focus on practical things which I had. Uh, and there's also WHO, this is very important, maybe main things, is this recommendation and how to strengthen the design and implementation of policies includes those for uh, resilient health system and health services. And, and in structure to treat people living with non-communicable disease and to prevent and control the risk factor in humanitarian images. And what they did have already, they make a guidelines for insulin management for ad uh, adult diabetes with um, people with diabetes. And this is WHO, they make this uh, non-communicable disease in emergencies, also a very interesting resource and one of the new, which they make for, especially for uh, Ukraine, Ukrainian, for, uh, for war, information for healthcare professional insulin product switch guide, switching between insulin product in disaster response set. This is include, very important for us because this is include a Ukrainian brand uh, which is now people who move to another country can be used. And also insulin storage is very important, uh, important uh, things um, that uh, ESD guidelines make this about, we know how it's um, storage insulin, but this is underlined, especially in crisis. But I also want to um, underline our um, IDF Europe Documents like IDF Europe awareness paper, storage of insulin, which I also co author on this um, paper. This is very important because this is uh, when storage insulin in the refrigerator at home, there is a risk of exposing into freezing temperature, which can make it less effective. This is we also must know. Uh, and um, go back to 24 February 2022. I never forgot when I was uh, wake up by my friend, called me and then Irina, wake up, war started. It was shock. We, we cannot uh, imagine this. And it's bombing, Russia bombing us. If you see on, on, on our map, it's all Ukraine was bombing from start. And this is, was a humanitarian crisis in result on Russia innovation. If you say, I cannot see this picture without any emotion, because this is crisis, co uh, touch everybody. Uh, children, pregnant women, adult people. This is extremely terrible situation. This was stopped. And another case, uh, 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 with, with, uh, if we speak about uh, diabetes and uh, diabetes care, about uh, pharmaceutical um, support, supplies, almost half of ph uh, pharmacies do not work because of the war in Ukraine. And, medical m and many medical workers and other move to and con cannot work. And from start, it was panic and many people... Uh, stay two, three fam hour next to pharmacy for buy something. Uh, 
Uh, and there, I say to you that I was in shock, maybe two days, I cannot do anything. And, there, uh, and after this, uh, I like wake up and uh, start thinking that there, I must do something. And uh, I decide to use my position, my my knowledge, my contact, my my uh, relationship with many, many people all, all the world to help uh, our people. And there, this is our action um, as professional. I understand that it must be based on communication, a partnership, management. And there, I make research how um, we can deliver it because many people uh, from different associations ask me how we can help you, how, how we can help people with diabetes in Ukraine. I make research that I understand that ministry, only Ministry of Health can not only get uh, humanitarian help and also deliver it to different regions in the Ukraine. Ukraine is a big country and they have a big logistic problem. And this is like communication with pharma who give to us, who have already worked and have some storage of insulin, give like humanitarian to people with diabetes and uh, NGO, our mm, member association, we have two member association of idea, but also another group, another association who want help and everybody help to people with diabetes. And they're also very important for me, our communication with doctor uh, association who help also like online consultation. And the uh, idea from start, um, we organized many meetings with our uh, president, IDF, Professor Bolton, and our regional chair, uh, uh, Dr. Nitipol, was involved from start and very active in this area. And we try to do best, most we can. Uh, and uh, with our partner, uh, Direct Relief, it's a partner of IDF. Uh, they, we deliver a lot of help to to the Ukrainian. It's not only insulin; it's also food and something else. And uh, this is my big sense to many partners who uh, who give to this possibility for help uh, for help uh, not only only supply and also with money. And uh, our association, uh, one of our association got also financial support. It's very important also. And uh, how is about medical care in this uh, situation? I think this is a big, big problem because it's stop hospitals, stop polyclinics, stop. And um, but uh, Minister of Health organized like hotline, what do you need? And also you, you uh, online consultation propose uh, many, many doctors, even not under the association, only like personal initiative. It's very also important. And this is like coordinate. Um, every initiative is also very important. If we speak about supplies and insulin, about, as I say, that pharmacy, um, um, many pharmacy closed, but step by step, like during one, two weeks, it's open and it's that little bit better uh, logistic because, for example, I live in one area and next to me was uh, another uh, pharmacy and I can help uh, them, not necessarily through the uh, city, go to the, to the city, to another part of Kiev. And also Ministry of Health may uh, make uh, Mm, one uh, new law about how we uh, get insulin before it was brand uh, insulin, or the prescribed brand, but after this, they prescribe only like short insulin and uh, prolonged insulin or mixed. And this, uh, this increase access to health. Uh, we have pharmacy have some, in, some insulin and can deliver it to people. And also many humanitarian help, which we got from direct relief or another organization um, and from Norway, as I ask, uh, uh, they deliver it to hospital and then hospital deliver it to some small region. This is all very important logistic. And this is problem uh, also. And we have uh, many um, points which we must uh, on the line, this is what we must do in emergency situation, what we must put in diabetes kit uh, in, uh, in your bag. This is, a, this is, of course, it's a super list, but I can share my experience. I have back in corridor 
uh, with insulin, with test strips, with glucometer, and with uh, small uh, uh, food, and also with one kilogram insulin, or one kilogram sugar. <laughs> this is very important for me because I have great hypoglycemia. And another case we must uh, remember about another health concern that, for example, people with dialysis uh, in, uh, in many situations cannot get this. And what I can say, big sense to another country who uh, give the, take these people to support, like Norway, like Sweden, who support these people who really need extremely um, help and which very expensive and maybe not possible to deliver. And also we can take about uh, take care about mental health, which a lot of stress. And what I want to say that in this time, increase, I think this is only about myself, increase short insulin. In this case, the dose of uh, short insulin increase. I thought I saw that it's only for me, but then I speak with many. Uh, I, I have a lot of contact and uh, very often uh, have had have, have communication. And this is uh, for everybody. This is because stress and this is increased short insulin. And we also ask directly deliver uh, short insulin more than prolonged. Uh, and. Uh, uh, ref refugees, many, uh, many Ukrainians moved to another country, and we are very thanks uh, to many countries, neighbors' countries, especially who give this support. And uh, what do uh, IDF Europe? They we make from start uh, office organized very good job and organized um, this complete uh, this page so connect solidarity, which useful for uh, useful for practice because very important have information which really help you not only name of association and page and some telephone created some information where and with really telephone with the really person who are responsible for this and uh, um, we uh, we have many feedback from people that is very good work but in same times we try to coordinate this work because, uh, for example, Poland is, get a lot of refugees and now have not um, not uh, uh, fi financial for this. And but grant uh, they got re relief uh, grant something like that. It's it improved and terrible situation on occupation territory which have not not access to any help, any you see even water. What, how they live without uh, light, without anything. And this is people under, under the us, uh, uh, not, not under the us control, uh, control. We cannot help them. We cannot deliver and help them. And this, I also ask WHO uh, about how possible deliver this, but it's even big organization cannot deliver because Russia stopped this. And uh, uh, for Indian, this is I want to say that uh, I fa um, re recognize some gaps of action in Ukraine. This is health uh, system is not ready. Many health system is not ready. In this case, we must prepare for this. Coordination is problem. Communication is problem. Con uh, control and monitoring uh, uh, every action is very important. It's not only uh, sent to humanitarian help. And there's also control and mass feedback. We try to do this. I'm not sure that it's super successful, but it's very also it's uh, it's not easy. And the logistic, as I say, this is some uh, some region we cannot deliver and unavailable diabetes care. And what uh, could be consequences? We must also ready for this. That after this is increases number of cases of diabetes because we have pandemic. And we have one now, and how many in, uh, complications will be increased, I'm, I'm sure. And we must be also ready for checking um, after the ending of war. And this is, of course, big economic burden to the uh, healthcare system. And uh, if uh, uh, I participate in um, two weeks ago in Diabetes Complex Forum about this uh, diabetes in disaster also, it was one of questions for discussion. And... Uh, I see how many organizations work in this area, 
but we don't know each uh, activity. This is also very important to know. And who can we speak about WHO? That WHO must coordinate this because WHO not only coordinate with us, they can influence on Ministry of Health. And this case is really uh, practical things. And for last, I want to share only uh, one story which I Listen from one doctor a few days ago that uh, one one soldier come to hospital and uh, we and they diag was diagnosed diabetes for, uh, first one uh, type one and uh, after the two weeks maximum uh, they got uh, insulin got uh, test strips and he go back to work. I was angry because oh how it's possible. He is, it's not, it not, not necessary. She said, yes, I say same, but it was his choice. In this case, it's amazing people who protect our country. And this is also people with diabetes. And thank you so much. Continue to stand with the Ukrainian. Thank you so much to all the, my friends in the world who helped to us, who support uh, we feel in this. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Irina. Uh, uh, we uh, in our uh, world, our on this uh, area of world that in the Middle East, we see a lot of these pictures. Also, we are accustomed about the disasters, but you are um, at last. We are human beings, and the. Um, not only the natural disasters, but uh, the disasters made by human beings uh, are not uh, accepted. And if for any reason a uh, conflict is there, people with uh, 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 diabetes or other chronic diseases must be protected from all these disasters. And we must uh, go hand in hand in all the world to uh, not to leave these people alone. Uh, and uh, we are uh, uh, um, shouting and praying and uh, advocating. Uh, every uh, people have the right to live in peace and uh, in health and have the, the needs, the essential needs to be uh, secured. Uh, so we hope uh, that this will finish not only in Ukraine, but also all over the world, we need peace, we need health, we, we, we need uh, uh, communications uh, uh, and live uh, uh, with each other in a very uh, good model, not like this of conflict. Thank you. And this was a symposium, a very important symposium for uh, um, uh, diabetes care. Uh, that is the final destination for any medical or non-medical uh, 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 job that diabetes care must be improved. So I am glad to share this uh, uh, session uh, and have four eminent speakers, the, Dr. Vida uh, from Lithuania. The, she she, she, she uh, um, elegantly outlined what is the uh, uh, National uh, Diabetes Association in Lithuania uh, did for the, the patient, but we need more and more communications, uh, not only in Lithuania, but in Ukraine and on all Europe and on all the world to, to get rid of the diabetes uh, uh, burden. And uh, then we have another hope from Dr. Uh, uh, Julia about the infusion uh, sets, uh, um, uh, uh, giving a new hope for the, uh, those who are taking insulin uh, to uh, facilitate uh, the adherence and the maintenance uh, of uh, insulin uh, uh, delivery. Uh, then we have this marvelous one, Jackie from Lebanon, the expert in diabetes education, and uh, she elegantly outlined to us uh, what means diabetes education for um, uh, the patient, for the family, for improving the quality of life, and uh, uh, how it can be delivered, and what is the importance of structures and programs. And uh, um, uh, at last, we have Irina, uh, our loved one uh, from Ukraine, and uh, Although uh, some of the pictures are um, uh, very hard to be seen by us, but uh, 
We realize it this, Irina. Uh, uh, we realize it this because we have about uh, uh, 50 years with these disasters and uh, that must come an end. We are uh, uh, at, uh, at last uh, uh, human beings uh, from all cultures, from all religions, and uh, nothing uh, must be uh, 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 leading us to these human disasters. If there is natural disaster, this is uh, not uh, on our hand. But I think human disasters are our hand, and we must not, uh, uh, should not permit it to disturb the living of our peoples uh, anywhere and uh, uh, everywhere. Uh, thank you very much for this symposium. I thank the organizing committee. I thank Banshee. And uh, I thank uh, the, all uh, um, uh, this IT uh, uh, help uh, from RX events and uh, uh, hoping to uh, meet each other again in a very uh, uh, pleased circumstances uh, for our diabetes. Uh, uh, peoples and uh, for the welfare of all the human beings. Thank you very much, our speakers. Thank you very much, uh, the organizing committee. Thank you, Professor Mespa. Thank you, thank you, Professor. Thank you, Bansha. Very nice thank to you. see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you audience who, who listen to us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, our, our uh, eminent speakers. And uh, see you in a very good circumstances, inshallah. Let's yeah. hope so. Thank Let's you for your moderation, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Irina. Thank you, Irina. Take care, Irina. Take care of yourself and uh, to the people. And uh, uh, we will meet uh, uh, soon in a better circumstances, inshallah. Yeah. yeah. And help speak. <laughs> okay.